Welcome all family to another episode of the MOA Member Chat. I'm your host, Michael Baysborn. And today we have Rob Knox, the Associate AD for Communications for UNC Greensboro. How are we doing, Rob? Uh, I'm great. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Glad to share whatever I can for my career with um, with you all. Definitely, definitely. So starting off as we normally do, just wanted you to have the floor to explain kind of your journey, you know, in, a, in an abbreviated fashion to uh, let the MOA members know a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, it's, it's really interesting when I think about my uh, my career, my life. Um, I, you know, I, I think it's just been like a few words. I've been blessed to be able to impact others everywhere I've been. And I think that, you know, just relationships and networking and being prepared has um, and opportunities have, have come my way uh, throughout my whole career because I never ever imagined working at um, college athletics. It was, it was never my goal to make college athletics. Uh, my only goal in life was to be a, a full-time sports reporter. That's all I ever wanted to do. And I accomplished that. Uh, I interned with the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, a few years later, I got my first full-time job with the Delaware County Daily Times covering high school sports, uh, college sports, and pro sports. It was the greatest thing ever. Uh, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I was like, this, oh, I'm living life. I'm doing everything I need to do, wanted to do. Then, um, you know, got a call in 2004 from my alma mater, Lincoln University in PA, the first historically black college in, in the country. Got to get that in there. Uh, and they were looking for a full-time SID. They asked if I would be willing to do it. And um, I said, sure, it looked easy. Uh, <laughs> because I dealt with SIDs on the other side as a newspaper reporter. <laughs> so one thing led to another and ended up leaving newspapers and going to Lincoln. Because I figured like working as a sports information director, I could still write, you know, I was like, mm -hmm. still writing. So I could still, you know, have that passion for writing because I love to write, I love to tell stories. And uh, I was at Lincoln from 04 to 09, did some great things there, but had some great people there. A lot of a lot of great moments that like shaped my career. Um, really good students, some student workers that, you know, really just allowed me to um, just discover another part of myself that I never knew was there. Uh, you know, I left Lincoln in 2009 to go to Kutztown, which is in Pennsylvania, because I wanted to challenge myself, because I think at the time, uh, Lincoln was transitioning to the CIAA, and Kutztown was established in a really good conference, the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. And they had, you know, 21 team sports I never covered before. And let's face it, you know, Kutztown wasn't a historically black college. So I was like, well, if I did all this here at Lincoln, let's see if I can do, let's see how good I really am, if I can do that at Kutztown. And, in the two years at Kutztown, I was blessed to, you know, uh, I think if you talk to people at Kutztown and, and people there, then I, I made a difference, I made an impact uh, at there. And I probably could be there for the rest of my life because I loved it. It's great people, great coaches. Then the opportunity opened up, ESPN. Um, I got recruited, that's a whole that's a whole different story. But I got recruited to, to work at ESPN, you know, you go through the process. I mean, again, when I was younger, I had a dream of working at ESPN. I didn't really think that was going to happen, but you know, I went to work at ESPN. I you know, got lucky. It happened. I uh, was there for two years. Um, in September of September 2013, um, you know, I was among the you know 400 people or so that was let go at, at, at that particular time. And um, you know, it was like really the first adversity I faced in my life uh, as far as um, not having a job. It was like the first I had at work in almost like almost 20 years or so, whatever the case may be. But um, it was a blessing in disguise. So I had a chance to spend a lot more time at home with my son. I got a chance to figure out what my next steps were. And I got an opportunity to um, get back into college athletics. And again, a lot of it was leveraged through relationships just relationships and that's one thing like if you take away anything from this i would say relationships relationships are key because um at coppin state i had that coppin state wasn't even on my radar mind you i'm still living in connecticut so i'm still looking i'm looking at schools in the northeast and trying to get back into the business up, up that way and um at coppin state the assistant men's basketball coach remembered me from lincoln because he used to coach at cheney and obviously we had rivalry with cheney he remembered me and coppin state had an immediate opening because their SID quit. He knew that, you know, I wasn't at ESPN no more. So he reached out, Alicia Shields Gasson reached out. And, you know, obviously wifey had to sign off with everything to move from, you know, Connecticut to Maryland. And she was going to still stay in Connecticut. So got to Coppin State, got there two years. Um, opportunity opened up at Towson. And, you know, it was a chance to 
work with fuel sports with more help and again challenge myself you know Towson is an established program in the mid-major conference and I'll be specifically working with men's basketball so that was an opportunity to work with men's basketball and then um you know obviously five years uh, same thing good people there good student athletes good memories and then this this position opened up and this position found me um so again it's just like through my career uh, I think it's just the opportunity. Um, obviously, I mean, I've had to. I mean, I've had to work hard, right? I've had to do something right along the way for these opportunities to find me and for people to feel that I'm like the, the, the best person. So I think it's a, you know, it's a combination of just hard work, networking, um, and just being prepared for the moment. I mean, when I sit back and think about my career, man, Mike, I'm in awe. Um, you know, I had a dream. You know, a lot of us in life, we don't get a chance to uh, fulfill our dreams. And I fulfilled three of them, um, and I'm still going. I mean, I wanted to be a sports reporter. That was a goal and dream of mine. Wanted to work at ESPN. I did that, and I wanted to work at a Division One school. You know, so I went from somebody never expecting to work in athletic communications <laughs> to um, when I got that taste at Lincoln. What would it be like to work at a Division One school? You know, it's like so. Um, so yeah, man, I'm blessed, and um, I think it's I think it's been a a beautiful journey for me. I think it's, um, you know, I've had my share of adversity. I've had my share of failures. I've had my share of disappointments. I had my share of doubts, um, uh, you know, along the way. But I've also had some really good people in my corner. Absolutely, absolutely. And definitely, um, you know, when I met you, or before I officially met you, I always recognized that you were someone that was very vibrant in our group settings and always, definitely someone that brings people together when we have those uh, during the MOA, MOA symposium when we had a chance to professionally connect. But you spoke on relationships, so let's let's go in that direction. Regarding MOA, how did you discover MOA? How long have you been a member? And, and what do you enjoy about being a part of the, the organization? Oh, I love the well, I can easily answer the last question. I love the community. I love the network. I love the family atmosphere. And, you know, I just I just love the fact that um, being in a different professional space within college athletics allows me to learn from associate athletic directors and athletic directors and, and have like meaningful dialogue, right? And people pour into me. You know, like I'll never forget um, Dean and Freeman Patton. We had a really powerful discussion last year or two years ago now in Atlanta during the inclusion forum. Same thing with Tamika Smith Jones. I mean, these are respected administrators um, at the at the highest level of of our, of, of, of our profession, for, and they took time out to like legit legitimately pour into. Me. You know, like I'll never forget. Dina, you know, she was like, yeah, you're a member of MOA, but what are you doing? <laughs> are you making an impact in the organization? And, you know, for whatever reason, that that stuck with me. And so that's obviously one reason why I'm um, here uh, doing, you know, a lot more active with MOA because I realized if I'm going to be a part of an organization, then I'm going to be a part of it. I'm not just going to say I'm a member so I can just add to my resume. Um, so... Uh, you know, obviously China, I mean, through, through this whole, through the whole process, the last year and a half, just really grooming me for some of these, um, this position basically here by, you know, being mean to me <laughs> during, um, when she was prepping me for interviews. But again, it was that, you know, again, it was that tough love that was needed. And I'm, I'm, I'm I just want to speak to China. Um, obviously she's done a fantastic job as president. And I just want to say one thing about China is that, that or about when I was at Coppin State, she said something to me oh, that stuck with me to this day. And this is something I want to say to people out there. Um, when I got late, when I got let go at ESPN, um, it was interesting. She had a position for me at Queens College. It was a director of like external relations. So it wasn't the nuts and bolts, day-to-day -day SID stuff. It was, you know, a step above. At that time, I personally didn't feel like I was prepared for that. I was scared. And I didn't apply. And ultimately, when I got to Coppin State, and you know, China, you know, she has ties to Coppin State. She saw me, and she fussed me out, and she gave me some really good advice. And she said, "Look, when somebody comes to you and offers you a job or offers you an opportunity, you need to 
um, pursue it. Whether or not you end up being the final person hired, you need to pursue it because if somebody's asking you for, if somebody's bringing you to a position and you don't have that experience, they're not going to let you fail. And that's something that, that's always that, that's something that's always stuck with me because, um, you know, we spend so much time like we got to be the perfect fit, we got to have all these right credentials, we got to have this, we got to have this, and you know, but you know, sometimes things just happen and you find yourself in a position, now you have to grow in that role and grow in that position. And though I don't have regrets because, you know, the way my career has, has evolved and um, that is a regret that I didn't take because I was scared. You know, she had the opportunity and I should have known, I should have trusted China at that point to know that, you know what? She's not going to let me fail. If I'm a fail, it's going to be because of me. <laughs> it's not because of her, because she's going to put me in position. She's going to give me everything I need to succeed. And I think a lot of people need to understand that, that if you are, if somebody brings you in to an organization, nine times out of 10, they want to help you um, have success because your success is their success, especially as an AD or, you know, or a leader. So I think that, you know, again, the relationship part of MOA, I got into MOA in 2015 when I was the, um, when I really became familiar with the organization during the meeting um, in San Antonio during the NSA convention, because it was my first NSA convention as uh, co signed the third vice president. And each year at NCA, we always meet with more. Um, and from that first meeting, because one of the first people I met was Dr. Renee Miles, who's also had another influence on me. And, um, and I'm fortunate enough that, you know, these women are friends, right? Um, we can joke and laugh about just life, about, you know, college stuff. But when it comes to them being invested in my success and and wanting me to do well, you know, I, I feel great that I can just pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, I need some help, you know, for preparing for X, Y, and Z. What's coming down the pike? Or what should I be thinking about? So, you know, yeah, so I think Mo has been, I know I kind of went up on a tangent there because, you know, just some things I just think about when you ask me about my career, and these are some of the things that I remember. And these are things that I want people to understand that, um, cause I know sometimes there's been a lot of young people out there and they're just like, I'm not ready for this. So I don't think, you know, this is the right position for me or this, that, the other. I mean, tomorrow, I mean, if somebody, you know, called you for something or, or is thinking about you for something, they must see something in you that, that you can bring to that position. And one thing I've learned real quick is that, you know, in college athletics, it's not so much the the aptitude that's as important as your attitude, as um, how you fit. Absolutely, and I can definitely speak to China and her tough love approach. She has definitely groomed me regarding everything that I'm doing with the MOA. And, you know, it's always one of those things where we have conversations about different things and she challenges me on a consistent basis. So we definitely appreciate everything she has done not only as an administrator, but with MOA as her results, they speak for themselves, oh, yeah. for itself, mm -hmm. as well as Renee uh, Miles Payne, everything that she does with the symposium. Uh, we definitely appreciate that and want to give them their flowers. So you, you definitely spoke to something that I want to dig into. And for a reference, Rob is from Chester, I'm from Philadelphia. So he had a chance to cover high school sports during the time where in, I believe I was currently playing. And so Where we did you play? Uh, I played at West Catholic. Oh, okay. Um, all right. All right. Okay. 1990, like, uh, had to be seven through 2001, I think, or 98 okay. through 2001. Um, so for those that are, that are not familiar with Chester, has a very rich basketball history. Um, a lot of great players have come out of Chester. So I'm curious in your time covering high school sports. Let's look at basketball. Besides Kobe Bryant, who was one of your favorite players to cover either out of the Chester area, Philadelphia area, or just kind of that greater Philadelphia area? Yeah, it, um, you know, I, I wrote for the Delaware County Times from, 99, from 1999 to 2004. And I would honestly say boys basketball was, was a memorable, was a memorable time for me. Uh, I enjoyed every aspect of it. Uh, obviously, being from Chester was, you know, obviously made it a little bit personal because my first year on the beat, Chester High won the state title. So I think being able to cover that team, um, obviously, Jameer Nelson senior year, 
Um, you know, and it's funny because at the time I didn't think I didn't think twice about how great Jamira was as a player because I knew Jamira as the person. I knew his family. So for me, um, that that first year, it was like, oh, he scored twenty five. Okay, but then when I look back on the articles I wrote, and it's like, you know, ten years later or something like that, I'm like, wow, you know, this is you know, prehistoric. Um, and, and it's funny because you know I meet people who who I cover or have covered, and they're like, hey, I remember when you covered our game. So I mean, so for me, it was. It was about creating energy, creating an atmosphere, and creating something that people wanted to look forward to reading the next morning. So, um, as far as like a favorite athlete or a favorite, you know, I used to love going to Penware High School. Um, I had nicknamed it, and it's funny because I nicknamed it Jim the Shoebox, and it's still indoors to this day, which is really interesting to me. Um, you know, I love going, you know, one time I went out to Pencrest High School in media. And the, the fan base, the, the student body called themselves the Dog Pound. I gave them a shout out on one of my columns. So that week, because I said, hey, I can't wait to be at the Dog Pound on Friday night because they play, you know, up somebody. And they made up flyers and posted around school. Hey, come to the game tonight. Rob Knox is uh, going to be at the game, you know, in the, sitting in the Dog Pound. So it was like, <laughs> so, you know, so it was funny, you know, I had, you know, gained the reputation, gained the following, but it was fun. Um, it was, it was like, five of the best years of my life. And uh, yeah, I mean, I had so many great athletes. I mean, obviously Jameer Nelson, Dwayne Jones, uh, Naeem Scott, also from Chester, uh, Steve Fattori from Springfield. Oh my God. It was just, it's, it's, it's just so, it's just a lot. Kashif Payne before, um, he's another Chester kid, but played at Carroll. I'm sure you may have played against him. Um, I specifically remember covering the West Catholic boys game in 2000, Super Bowl Sunday. So I said, well, I would just, because all three of our teams were on the road. So I was like, the closest one is West Catholic. So I'll just go to West Philly. So I've been down in the basement on um, there. Uh, yeah, it's been fun, man. Got Sheep um, Payne. Got Sheep, yeah. I remember Sheep, when no. Sheep Payne, because he was younger than me. He was, I think mm -hmm. he even started as a freshman at yeah, Carroll. He, yeah. And, yeah. and I remember when he came on the scene, he was so quick. I mean, like lightning quick. Like yeah, one of the best games I covered was between him and um and Tabby Cunningham. Um and, mm, and yeah. New Ready. Man, that it, it was like they were going at it. I mean, you know, I remember you know covering Cal Lowry in high school, uh, when he was at Cardinal Doherty. Uh, I yeah. mean <laughs> the only time I really covered them was like when they played chess because they weren't in like in our county. So but you know, being being a, a, a voter for like the all state the Pennsylvania all state boys basketball team. And just being one of the respected writers around the state of Pennsylvania, for me, was something at the time I didn't really think about until like after I left the paper and I kind of realized the impact that I had and like where, like, like from a status wise that, that I was perceived. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We can talk. We can talk. Yeah, we can I talk think that was one of the. <laughs> yeah, I think that was one of the golden eras of basketball within the area. We had a lot of great prospects come out, go Division One. Some um, were fortunate enough to make it to the NBA, and the countless others went overseas. But yeah, speaking kind of towards, yep. Yep, go ahead. Oh no, I want to say because you know Wayne Ellington and, and Gerald Henderson at Episcopal. Uh, I remember one of the dogs that Wayne Ellington had who was really crazy, and, and God rest his soul. You know, freshman year. I mean, my first year on the beat. Eddie Griffin was a senior at Roman Catholic, you know, so, uh, yeah, yeah, just um, as, as you mentioned, there's so many great players, so I'm sorry. No, no, absolutely, it's, um, the experience is just listening to, uh, just to you, your story is definitely uh, fun to hear from your perspective during, during that time. So just segueing to your skill set and what you've done regarding all the events that you, that you have covered, what would you say is your favorite to date? If you can pick one or two. I would do two. They're going to be both professional events because there's been so many college things I've covered, um, you know, just for working, you know, obviously all the schools, you know, all the schools I've been at, obviously, um, Chris Town won the um, Division Two College World Series uh, rank, ranks up there. Um, you know, for me, uh, I've never been at, this, you know, with Chris Town, NCAA Division Two men's basketball tournament. That was cool. So on a professional level, I would say um, the the two things, the, well, I'm going to go three things. Um, newspaper, uh, and they all have a newspaper, so no no, no particular order. Uh, pen relays every year. 
uh, NBA draft when Jameer Nelson got drafted. Uh, that was like probably one of the highlights because uh, that was like Dwight Howard's so year. Um, and, and, and that class, Mecca Okafor, uh, Ben Gordon. So, you know, and, and spending the day with them um, on the bus going to, to Harlem was like one of the one of the highlights for me. You know, just sitting there just on this bus on these on this bus with um NBA prospect with prospects that uh, tomorrow the next day their life is going to change forever. And then, you know, covering WNBA All Star Games. Uh my first one was in D C and quick funny story, um, you know, and social media wasn't out back in two thousand three like like it is now. So honestly I don't have any pictures to prove it or selfies to uh to capture the moment. But one of the highlights for me is I bumped into a shiny, literally bumped into her backstage, and I didn't know who it was. And I didn't know, because, you know, just quick up, because all I knew was I had bumped into somebody. So I was like, excuse me, you know. So I was like, boop. Oh, my fault. Oh, oh you were shiny, you know. <laughs> like, I was like, so starstruck. Because uh, she had saved the national anthem, and she also had performed at halftime of, of the of the game. So I was like, "Man, I've been a shiny," you know? but didn't know it. So cool, so cool. So segueing slightly again mm-hmm. with it being Black History Month, wanted to get your thoughts on what this month means to you, and then two part question. With you being the former president of Kusaida, I believe the second black person to hold that position. Can you kind of also speak to that experience? And what was the first part of it, like what Black History means to me? Uh, yes, what does Black History Month mean to you? Uh, um, I, uh, it's a, you know, I think Black History Month for me is it's a celebration of, of our excellence and our contributions to the country and the impact that we've had on every aspect of, um, of American society. And it also is an opportunity to just, again, um, understand the resilience that a lot of our, a lot of people have endured from Harriet Tubman, this during the truth of Frederick Douglass, um, you know, that they, they endured to pay, you know, to pave the way for the opportunities that we have now today that, you know, sometimes we take for granted. Um, but it's also an opportunity to, to, you know, continue to learn, right, you know, you know, we don't hear about um, a lot about Benjamin Banneker and, 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 and his, you know, his contributions or, you know, Booker T. Washington, you know, I mean, he's a, um, you know, without Benjamin Banneker, I don't know, <laughs> or Granville T. Woods, I don't know, who, you know, if we would have, you know, streets and stuff as we know it, right, or in D.C. for that matter. So I think, you know, Black history is always an opportunity to, to shine that light and, and, and to allow um, the younger generation to understand, you know, what came before us. But I also look at Black history another way too, obviously, because I think that, you know, we should never be fooled into saying, well, February from, you know, February, the shortest month of the year is where we celebrate. Because obviously, there's Black history happening every day through this five days a year. And the thing about being in college athletics is that, um, you know, Black history is all around us. You know, from especially, you know, uh, especially at our uh, historically black colleges and universities. And that's why I'm a proud graduate of Lincoln. And it means so much to me um, with um, with the history and, and everything that was going on, in, you know, in the country at the time. But, you know, let's not be fooled. You know, um, MOA, you know, the people in the organization are creating history every single day. You know, China's creating history every single day. Every member, and I saw something yesterday, we have 910 members. Every member that's in MOA is creating a legacy, you know, through through what they do on a day-to-day basis on their respective campuses. So, you know, you have to look at it through that lens too, that you are creating something special that in maybe five, 10, 15, 20 years, people want to look back on and say that, you know, Michael Baysmore did X, Y, and Z, Rob Knox did X, Y, and Z. Um, so to dread to uh, to your second question, like co-sign the president, um, I have to do a better job of appreciating the moment that I'm in. I don't necessarily think I I don't necessarily believe I do a greater job of appreciating the moments that I am in because I think at the end of the day, when I look back on it, I'm like, wow, I was president co-sign. I mean, that's like really cool. Like you know, 
not too many people can say that. I was on a Zoom call yesterday, and and my buddy Darnell um, Smith, who was one, one of my Leadership Institute classmates, you know, we were talking about our class, and we got three athletic directors, and so many people doing like phenomenal things. You know, it's just like making it, you know, really, you know, tra transforming college athletics, in my opinion, from from my leadership class, and. You know, Darnell again, and he 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 helps. He has helped me a lot with this, as have you know people in my class. Um, you know, he was like, yeah, everybody's done that, but you're the only one that can say you were the president of a major organization. And you know, it's like, yeah, you're right. You know, and I'm like, wow, that's you know that that was a big deal. Like I didn't understand how big the deal Cosina president was until I was like going through it. But then I was so focused on making sure that all my work at Towson was, you know, met deadlines. I didn't, you know, fall behind on basketball stuff or interviews. <laughs> so I was like so focused on that that I didn't really have an opportunity to like fully appreciate in the moment being co signer president until it was like over. And I gave the gavel to Hurt Vincent and I gave my farewell speech and I'm like, wow. But it was a blessing, man. I mean, let's face it, you know, having an opportunity to be co signer president is not something I take lightly. Because at the end of the day, you can't do what you can't see. So, um, you know, all I knew it, it was thirty. It was uh, thirty-two years between black presidents and co-signers. Um, I knew that I didn't want it to be another thirty-two years between black presidents. Fortunately, and I'm like my heart is filled with so much joy because Jessica Poole now, um, who's at Chicago State, another one of my great good friends in the business, she's going. <clears throat> she's going to be the president. Um, beginning next year, 2022, I believe, 22, 20, yeah, 22, 23 school year, she's gonna be the first black um, black female president of COSI. So, so I love, I, I, I love that, right? So, you know, yeah, you know, I had my time, it was great. I enjoyed it, I felt like we, we done some things, like we got involved in the uh, inclusion, um, the, the uh, NCAA inclusion forum, we made, we're gonna make that a regular, um, make sure somebody from Coastside attends that every single year uh, because diversity and inclusion has been one of, one of our pillars for, for the organization. Uh, so, so, yeah, it was it was fun, man. I mean, you know, I got to travel a lot, you know, before pre-COVID. So, you know, so I, you know, I, I take that as a, as a blessing. So I got a chance to, you know, meet a lot of people and expand my network and, um, and you know, rep represent. So I think that, to me, that's important uh, to represent and show people and help them understand the value of, of our position. And I think that a lot of people saw how valuable and creative we were, especially during this pandemic, because we had to still, you know, write stories without games. Absolutely. And I, I definitely can speak to doing a better job or trying to do a better job of being in the moment and recognizing that you're doing some great things. And we definitely appreciate everything that you're currently doing and have done, uh, especially with COSIDA, as there aren't too many uh, Black individuals out there that are communication directors or are SIDs. So we definitely appreciate you being a trailblazer in, in that area. So a couple more questions before we mm -hmm. let you let you go. Um, if you were, I guess, looking back at your career, what advice would you give a younger Rob Knox? <laughs> I just gave this to somebody the other day, too. Uh, I would give, uh, I would say don't take everything personal. Um, I think, you know, I think, again, I think when we're young, we, uh, we're so tethered to everything that we do that when somebody says something to us, we like, you know, curl up and just take it personal or feel like we're like the worst person ever or when we get mad at you or anything like that. So I would tell younger Rob Knox, you know, don't take it personal. You know, it's, it's, you know, it is what it is. You just keep moving, take the feedback, uh, consider the source. Uh, you know, nine times out of 10 is going to help you. Um, so just take it and, 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 and keep going. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we are at the portion of today's episode where we have the MOA member minute is a chance for our MOA member to give any personal or professional advice or words of encouragement to the MOA family. So without further ado, Rob, this is your MOA member minute. This is my moment. I just got to take it, right? Yes. I feel like I'm giving advice the whole the whole time we talk. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that um, 
I think for everybody out there that's, that's watching or, or people that know me, know I operate uh, through, through a few things. I, you know, I believe in being authentic. I believe in being intentional. And I believe in being transparent. I think those things, I think those three traits will help blaze your trail in college athletics and get you to where you want to get to. Obviously, you have to be great where you are, regardless of uh, if you're trying to get a job and trying to get out of a place, uh, regardless if you keep you know, being disappointed on stuff. At the end of the day, if you're consistent, people want to find you. People want to know who you are. Uh, and I think that's that's what happens in this business. You know, pe- this business is small. You know, we all know each other. Or, you know, we like to think we all know each other. <laughs> but you'd be surprised at how many people know you that you don't even know. And you'd be surprised at how, how, um, how your name is being spoken in rooms that you have never entered yet. And all that is because you know you're being consistent, you're being authentic, you're being transparent, and you're being um, intentional. Um, and that intentional in every sense, right? You know, you gotta build relationships, networking is work. Um, so it's not like where well, you meet. I meet Michael one day and we talk, and that's my guy. And now, you know, five years later, there's a position coming up at the NCAA. Dog, what's up? Can I get a job? You remember me from five years ago? <laughs> so. So you have to really you have to put in work in the relationship, and I think uh, when I think about you know obviously I talked talked about uh, Dina, Renee, China, and and, and Tamika, it, it's taking work to build those types of relationships that I feel comfortable calling and um, asking for advice or asking for different things or suggesting different things or whatever like that. And again, lastly, you want to also um, you know establish yourself as you know as an expert and as a leader in your area of expertise. And, you know, I've been fortunate that people look at me as somebody that knows what they're doing in athletic communications, even though I don't always feel that way. <laughs> you know, when you, again, when you're in the day-to-day stuff, you don't always feel like you have all the answers or you have the experts. But, you know, I, I, you know I'm coming to grips with, I've been around a while, I'm old, um, but I have a young spirit and a young heart, and I love people, I love athletics, and I love to um, impact and motivate others. Absolutely. That probably was Absolutely. Over a minute. I know, no, great. Um, like I said, great conversation. Great conversation. So, definitely appreciate you joining us today. Uh, this has been another episode of the MOA Member Chat. I'm your host, Michael Baysmore. And as always, more family, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned.